school. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday, manna. So excited to share this word with you today. It's a cool word. It's found in the book of Proverbs. It's not a very common word, but it has a lot of substance and I want to share with you today. It's Proverbs 11.25. Proverbs 11.25. It says this, the generous soul will be made rich. The generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. Let me say that again. <coughs> Excuse me. The generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. Do you understand today that the Lord has called us to live generous lives, lives that are, are outward focused, that we are to be generous with our finances, with our resources, with our talent, with our time, with our love, with our with the gospel. We are to be generous people. We are to people that live our, our lives open-handed and to give. You know, people don't like to talk about money a lot, but Jesus talked a lot about money. Jesus talked a lot about giving. He talked a lot about pouring out. And I want to tell you something. The Bible is clear. The Bible is clear that God blesses those that give generously. Here he says, he who is a generous soul. So it's not generous in one area. It's generous in every area because your soul is generous. So it's not generous with your pocket or generous just with your time. Or No, your soul is generous. So the Bible says he who has a generous soul will be made rich. So it is talking about giving financially, finding areas to bless and to give. And I want to tell you something, the tithe, the 10% of your income, that's not optional, folks. The Bible is clear that that belongs to the Lord. And I'm going to say it this way. Actually, the whole 100% of what we make really belongs to God. He is generous and allows us to keep 90% and he asks for 10% back. That's how generous God is. He gives us the 90 that's his. And he says, give me the 10% 10, 10 back, not because he needs it, but he wants a window to bless us with because God blesses those that are generous. So he says, give, but it's not just the 10%. It's above that. Finding ways to be generous. Where is our offering going? The offering is above the 10%. And then from there, where whose life can I bless? Who can I walk beside? Who can I help? And that's with time as well. What does time look like? Maybe the sister needs someone to talk to. Maybe this family needs a friend. Maybe I can take this woman out for coffee. Maybe I can sit with this struggling mom. Maybe I see this woman in church or this man, if you're a man, and, and they're new in their faith and they need somebody to be their friend. Can I tell you something? Discipleship is not a course. Discipleship is a journey. So sometimes people that are young in faith or people who are walking out their faith, they need somebody to walk with them. Could you be generous with your time? Could you be generous with your resources? Maybe there's someone who wants to learn something and you know how to do it. Maybe there's someone who wants to learn how to cook. Could you help them? Is there someone you could help decorate their home? Learning to be generous should be a part of your life as a believer. You know, the world teaches us to be selfish. I look out for me and mine. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that I'm to look out for those in front of us. I'm to love my neighbor. I'm supposed to care and be generous and give graciously to people around us. People that I can bless, people in other countries if they need it, people oh, in missions, how important it is for us to give to missions and to give the people who are doing the work of the Lord and to give generously because the Bible says that you in turn will be rich. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because it takes faith to live generously. Hear me. It takes faith to live generously. <clears throat> and faith is the language of heaven. It's how you spend money in heaven. It's the currency. So when we speak faith by giving out our resources, our time, our finances, God gives back to us. I remember one of the days in Bible school that I was in, I was in my second year or so, I believe, and we had finals the next day. And I, and I was planning to study all night. I was going to put it all night. I had been studying, but I was going to do my, my cram work right there. And this girl walks in my, my room and she's a mess. She's falling apart. I'm afraid she's suicidal. And I spent the whole night ministering to this girl. Ministering to her, weeping with her, praying with her. And by like three or four in the morning, God had set her free. She was different. The Holy Spirit met her. 
It was a fantastic night. The problem was I didn't study. And I was walking into my final at 7.52 that morning, 7.50 that morning. <clears throat> so I get dressed. I go to class. I'm prepared to fail because I didn't study. I know I didn't study. And I said to the Lord, a simple prayer, I said, Lord, I did last night what I felt you wanted me to do. I gave her my time because she needed it. Help me today on this final. Give me the answers because I really don't know them. And the teacher walks in and this is what he says. He said, I feel it's Bible school. So <clears throat> you have spirit filled teachers. He goes, I just feel led of the Lord today to postpone the final. There's a reason for it. I don't know the reason, but God told me to postpone the final. So your final is in three days. And he gave us three more days to study. I was like, that's the Lord making me rich because I was generous to this girl who needed me. I gave her my time and God made me rich. Postponed the final. I took it three days later. I got an A, by the way. And God blessed me. See, that's how God works. When <clears throat> we give generously, he makes us rich. It also says that when you water, you yourself will be watered. That means when you give out, when you pour out, when you, when you water people's lives, that means you bring refreshing to their lives, right? You bring water to their life. You yourself will be watered. And maybe not by those people, maybe not by other people, but by the Lord himself. He will water you back. This is how I feel always. When we take care of the things God tells us to take care of, he takes care of everything that we need taken care of. Your house, my house, it'll lack nothing when we live generously and we choose to be water to other people. You'll lack nothing, child of God. Don't ever be afraid to live generously. Don't ever be afraid to give. Don't ever be afraid to water someone's life because you in turn will be watered. You will lack nothing when you give. Amen. And so, Father, I bless you. And I pray, God, that you give us the courage and the faith to live generously, <coughs> to water those around us, to water families and churches and ministries and the unsaved. And anyone that you bring in our path, Lord God, knowing that as we do that and as we obey you, we will lack nothing. We, in turn, will be watered back. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys have a great day today. I will see you tonight for prayer, 9, 15 p.m. Please pray with us. We are continuing to pray for the Ukraine and what's going on in Europe. We are believing God to do a great work. We are seeing signs and wonders, and we're going to continue to pray and believe God to show up. Love you all. Have a great day.